Baker. Knox feeling it! When was the last time the future looked so bright for the Knicks? Let's take a trip down memory lane. What's good, Knicks Nation? It's your boy CP, the NY Fanatic, back again with another video. And if this is your first time on the channel and you're a diehard Knicks fan, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. I grew up during the Ewing era. It was a time when it seemed like every year the Knicks were contending for something. We were well respected. We were feared. We played tough, physical, defense. Those are what the 90s Knicks teams were known for. The garden was always rocking. There were always memories to be shared. We never won the big one, but the 90s Knicks teams made the city proud. They were our heroes. And NBA history has just been made. The New York Knicks are the first eight seed to ever make the NBA Finals. After we traded the captain, things started to go downhill. Many years of mismanagement led to bad trade after bad trade and bad contract after bad contract. Then in 2004, the prodigal son came home. But his homecoming was short-lived and he too will go down in a blaze. I did like those Isaiah teams on paper. They were young, they were talented, but they could just never figure it out together. We brought in big name coach after big name coach and we all thought they would turn things around. But one by one, they all failed. Seemed like nothing could bring us back to the promised land. When we finally untied the knots of years of bad trades, bad contracts, and mismanagement, we went for the big fish, but we struck out and had to settle for plan B. Yep, the Knicks, the Knicks are back. You know, it's uh, def definitely great to, to be a part of a, a beautiful organization. And don't get me wrong, the Knicks were back for about half a season. With Amari Stoudemire assigned to the team, the Knicks had their most talented player since Patrick Ewing. The Garden was rocking, the Knicks had a nice young team going, and Stat was leading the way to an MVP caliber season. But it didn't really seem like we were building for the future. It seemed like we were building to win now. We were chasing big threes. Case in point, the Mellow trade. I'm still dreaming right now. Um, you know, it was a dream come true for myself. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready to get down to business right now. With the mellow trade, it really seemed like the Knicks were back. We had the best scorer in the game combined with one of the most dominant big men in the game. I really thought Stat and Mellow together would have been the best one-two punch in the league. But things never really seemed to work out. The chemistry was never there, and eventually, neither was Amari. His injury made his contract an albatross, and since the Knicks had to mortgage the future to get Melo here, they were always stuck patching teams together instead of building for the future. Set up the D. The crowd on its feet here at the Air Canada Center. Lynn puts it up. Bang! Jeremy Lynn from downtown, and the Knicks take the lead! The Linsanity era was probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen in all my years watching basketball. For 26 games, a kid that was on the verge of being cut from the team took over one of the most historic teams in the league history and was the king of the city. The electricity in the garden was definitely back. Jeremy Lin was a fan favorite to everybody. Well, maybe not everybody. But after the 26 games, Linsanity was over. Lin signed a restricted free agent deal with the Rockets, an offer he couldn't refuse, and an offer I'm glad the Knicks did refuse. Then there was Knicks tape. The 2012-13 season caught us all by surprise. The Knicks were a well-balanced team mixed with youth, veteran leadership, shooting, athleticism, and defense. The team went on to finish 54-28, and 28, the second seed in the Eastern Conference, and Carmelo finished third in the MVP voting. He was coming in for JR. Anthony attacks oh. Hibbert to 
Denies him at the rim. Block number five for the Pacers center. Wow, what a play. Oh, man, what action. Some kind of block. Great back cut there. J.R. Smith caught watching the basketball. And Stevenson again. Any chance to, you know, get to, get to the uh, conference finals. We'll take that. You know, it's just a learning curve for us, and we'll be back, you know, better and stronger next season for sure. Funny thing is, we haven't been back since. As a matter of fact, we've been going backwards, losing season after losing season, more bad trades where we give up first round picks and get nothing in return. And I have some things to say that I think are important for the fans to hear. We want to build a team. The idea of Developing a culture is an overwrought word in the NBA right now, but that's the cachet I think that brought me here. Ah, Phil, Phil, Phil. I really thought he was gonna be the difference maker, the one to turn the franchise around, to clean up our dysfunctional management, and bring winning back to New York. But it just seemed to be more of the same. Everything was about the triangle, triangle, triangle. From the coaches he tried to bring in, to the players he tried to bring in. Phil was trying to implement his championship system from the sidelines. And where was the culture that Phil was trying to implement? From the rumors that he was falling asleep during draft workouts, to trashing a star player that he was trying to eventually trade, things just never really made any sense. With the fourth pick in the 2015 NBA draft, the New York Knicks select Kristaps Porzingis from Leopaya. All wasn't lost during the Phil Jackson era. He did manage to draft Kristaps Porzingis, and the Porzingis has taken MSG by storm. With Melo gone, KP is now the new face of the franchise. Give credit to Phil for not trading away any future assets. For the Bucks, he's also played a couple of years in China. 15 to 3. Boston has come back. They came back with a good second quarter. Nice pass. Oh, no, it's picked. He's with nearly Pond. Nilakina for three. Frank Nilakina, the last Phil Jackson draft pick before we showed him the door. And we could argue all day and all night about whether or not he was the right pick, but I'm going to be patient with this kid. His defensive pedigree alone is something that we could use on this team to build towards the future. With Phil gone, a new regime has taken over. Well, I guess a new old regime with Scott Perry as the GM and Steve Mills retained as the president of basketball operations. The new team has been talking a good game so far. No shortcuts, rebuild through youth, rebuild through the draft. Let's see what happens. You know, I know Pop's got pedigree and I'm a young rookie, but they're not gonna rook us. That's unacceptable. That was unprofessional. My guys dug in that game and earned the right to be in that game, and they did not even give us a chance. Take that for data. In David Fisdale, the Knicks hired a fiery young coach looking to rebound after a rough finish in Memphis, and he's come in saying all the right things. Defense, physicality, accountability, playing together, playing tough. He's already come in and established a relationship with the players, something that management has been keen on. Miller, the sideline coach here for Summer League, knocks. Got it! Knocking that down! In drafting Kevin Knox, the Knicks went for the upside, and it looks like they might have gotten this one right. The kid has so far shown off an offensive repertoire, inside game, outside, coast-to-coast -coast ball handling three-point shot. At 18 years old, the sky's the limit for this kid. With Mitchell Robertson, it looks like the Knicks got an even bigger steal in the second round of the draft. This kid is coming in with an athleticism that we haven't seen before. Blocking shots, filling the lane, a pick and roll nightmare if we get a proper point guard play. Mitchell Robinson is going to be here to stay, and with proper coaching, this kid has star potential all over him. So things seem to be looking up for the Knicks. And if they play their cards right, they have the opportunity to develop players while at the same time clearing up enough cap space to potentially add some more talent to fortify this team and eventually turn it into a true contender. 
Now, I don't know who's going to come here in 2019 and beyond, but the possibilities of landing one or two big fish to add to this young core, it's exciting. At the same time, we can't sit here and worry about tomorrow. They're just rumors at the end of the day. Let's just sit back, enjoy this youth movement, and see how we develop these young players. And there's still work to be done. We're not out of the woods yet. There's always questions to be answered when it comes to the Knicks, but I'm going to remain cautiously optimistic for the future. Things just seem different now. I want to see the garden rocking again like this. Maybe the Kristaps era will be the one to change things. Time will tell. See you next year. Knicks Nation, thanks again for your support of Knicks Fan TV. Season 2 of Post Game Live will be back bigger and better than ever. What do you guys think of the video? Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Share it with your fellow Knicks fan. And as usual, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything.